Hello, in this video I will talk about how we can read in time series data from files and also work with it using for example grouping and resampling. Okay, so we want to read uh, this file called AO monthly and this is a text file in the format of fixed width formatted lines and this is a format similar to CSV and Python, uh, Pandas will, um, yeah, it has a function for that, um, it's, it's called read FWF uh, which stands for fixed width formatted and uh, yeah this is able to read this kind of file um, we can use this command here to just print out the head of this text file and you can see that um, yeah we have these columns here and they are with a fixed width as the name of the format already says um, and yeah pandas will read these columns um, in just similar as csv but csv just has uh, a delimiter uh, whereas these uh, format this format has a like, fixed fixed width um, line okay but we can read this and this will give us this data frame here and uh, we said that the index column should be the index uh, which should be the column zero and now we have this year as our index and then we have the columns one and two here okay but right now this is an integer index and we would like to have this as a date time index how we can how can we do that so in this read fwf function as well as in the read csv function we can specify these um, parse dates and infer date time format uh, parameters and if we set infer date time format to true then it will automatically figure out um, how the date time uh, is formatted and we set these parse dates um, to uh, like a list of lists here in this case we have to do this because um, our month is in the is in one column and uh, the year is in another column so we have to specify the year column first and then the month column and in this case these are 0 and 1 and this will tell um, yeah tell pandas that these two columns should be a date and the inner list will tell it to um, treat them as a single date okay so if we ex execute this we can see we now have these dates here and uh, correctly parsed this year and the month and uh, assign the first day of the month to all these rows okay and we can now see that we have a date time index and this is what we wanted we can also plot this data of course um, just as we saw before and um, this will just allow us to have a look at how the data looks and we can also see that um, it automatically assigned the years as the x ticks here okay um, we can have a look at the different years in the index by um, looking at the year attribute of the uh, time series index. So ts.index.year will give us um, an int index containing all the years for this uh, date time index. Then um, we can use this int64 index with the years to group um, our original data frame or time series. Um, and we do that by just using group by as we've done before and specifying these years and this would be the same as just giving it a whole list of these years but we can access this list by uh, ts.index.year so we can just group by each year and in this case we want to calculate the mean and just plot, uh, print out the head so yeah here we have the different years and it grouped by um, the year and calculated the mean over all of these uh, values um, yeah this is the same just plotted and here we can see now we have individual values for each year. Okay, if we want to do some more complex grouping on uh, time series data, we can use the pd.grouper object. And this allows us to uh, specify the frequency. And we set this to a string, um, which indicates what the frequency of this grouping should be. And in this case, uh, 5y will tell it to um, group this with a frequency of five years. Whereas in the example below, um, we have a frequency of D, which is daily. And um, yeah, you can have a look at the uh, documentation of this grouper object to see what options there are. Um, I don't think it makes sense to just list all of these options right now, because you will probably forget them anyways. And it's very common to just look up um, what these values are in the documentation. So whenever you have a problem and you want to group something, um, it's easiest to just quickly go to the documentation page and look up um, what the certain values that you need. 
Okay, but as you can see here, um, this first one grouped by five years. So now our years um, are incremented in steps of five. And um, the second one, the daily one, actually created some NAN values here. Since our, daily, uh, since our data that we uh, loaded was just monthly, um, and now we want to have it as a daily um, time series. Now it had to create some new values out of thin air, and it can't do that, of course. And that's why it just uses NAN here. But it still created this daytime index, which is now daily. Okay, now um, we would like to resample this um, time series and um, yeah, either um, resample it with a higher frequency or with a lower frequency. Um, and there are different options that allow us to do that in Pandas. Um, yeah, to do this, we first of all just want to look at the values in the year um, 1950. And we save just uh, the data from the time series indexed at 1950 into our variable called 1950 here. And um, yeah, this just gives us the monthly data um, of 1950. We can plot this to quickly see how it looks. So here we have the different months of the year and then um, just the data as a plot. And then we can use this as frick um, function to resample. And this will uh, take a string which specifies the new frequency at which we want to sample it. And then we can also specify a method here. And the method is set to f fill, and we've seen this before. This is, uh, this stands for forward fill, and this will insert um, yeah the values from previous rows if we uh, don't have a, a value for the current row. So while resampling, it can of course happen that um, we don't have a value for a certain row that we want to to create with a new um, date, and f fill will just use the previous value, so it will take the one from above. And if we do this, we now have uh, 12 day increments here in our day time. And as you can see, it just uses the same value as before. So we have these three um, values. Uh, yeah, three values are always the same um, because we have monthly data. Okay, if we plot this, we can see, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and this is just, just the normal plot again, as I notice. Um, we can also just use this. So this will be um, our resampled data, a plot of our resampled data. And here um, you can see that this is resampled. And since we used forward fill, the values are always the same. So this didn't give us much um, more information, but now we just have yeah, resampled data. And this might make sense if you have uh, some other data set, for example, with a different um, time index and you want to like, compare these two, for example. Okay, this will um, now just create two subplots here, which show two examples. Um, in the first subplot here, the first row, um, we just resample this uh, data to uh, the, in this 12 day frequency again. And uh, we don't specify a method here. And this means that we don't fill. So now um, it will contain any n values and these are not plotted. So here we just have these uh, few values um, that are the result here. And um, we only have few values here because it's not very often that in a 12 day cycle that we get um, an exact value from our previous data set. So since we only have values for the first day of each month, um, if we take a 12 day uh, cycle, then it doesn't happen very often that we hit spot on on the first day of the month where we have a value. So yeah, we only have these two values here um, since these are the only two uh, days in the year which um, yeah, for which we had values. Okay, but in the second subplot, you can see we first have um, in blue the forward fill using the F fill uh, argument. In orange, we have the back fill using the B fill argument. And then the green dots are just the original plot uh, the original data without resampling. So you can see that for the blue one, it's always um, yeah the green dot and then dots with the same value following behind that. And for the orange one, which is the backwards fill, it's just the opposite. Um, the green value is uh, the last one in this row of yeah these orange values. Um, 
it's kind of difficult to explain, but I hope this is clear when looking at this plot, um, in which direction the backwards and forwards will work. All right, now we can also downsample our data. As you know, um, the data frame that we read in has monthly data, but now we use SFRAC to um, yeah, resample this to a three months cycle. If we plot this, you can just see, um, yeah, we get a value in January, in April, in July, in October, and this is just a three day, a three month cycle, um, which is downsampled from our original data, and this also uses a forward fill. Okay, um, yeah, this is just a plot of this um, with our three months cycle data and the original data in orange. So here you can see that um, it just took the values and didn't do anything uh, like interpolation or something like that, um, or averaging. It just took the values at the certain um, frequencies. So yeah, this is really just resampling without any additional computations on that. Okay, now we can also use a different function to do the resampling. And um, yeah, the different function I want to cover is called resample. And um, we want to do this on a different example. So for that, we um, read another data frame. So we create another data frame. In this case, this is the Yahoo stock um, from this Yahoo stock CSV file. And uh, as you can see, we already have this date time index here because we set parse dates to true. And parse dates true will just look at our data and try to figure out which of these could be a date time. And in this case, this just works because in our CSV file, we, ha only, we already have the whole date uh, in one column. Previously, that wasn't enough because our date was uh, yeah, split up into two columns. But now we can just set parse dates to true and we get this date time index already. Okay. Um, but now what we want to look at is just the close uh, column of our data um, together with the date time index. And the close column is just uh, yeah, the, the closing price of the stock at uh, the certain day here. Okay, now we can use uh, the resample function and um, yeah, as another example, the sfrag function as well. And um, yeah, here you can see uh, the different ways these two functions work. In both cases here, we, um, yeah, we specify the frequency as BA and this is the code for the business year. So it will resample it for each year um, yeah, just using the business year as a uh, frequency. And uh, you will notice that the resample and sfrag functions return different values. And this is because sfrag will just take the actual values from our um, time series, whereas resample is more like a group by and um, yeah, we perform an aggregation. And you can also see that we add the, added the mean call here. So um, yeah, the resample will basically do a group by by these business years and then um, we just use the mean of each of these groups and this is why we get different values for resample and sfrag here. 